Hello, we're going to look at a brief introduction into uh, chapter four. Chapter four is tissues, glands, and membranes. First off, to get a good overview of the chapter, we are looking at tissue, and there are four major types of tissue, epithelium, connective, muscle, and nervous. It's important you know which tissues are in each classification and what the main purpose of them is. Then we're also going to look briefly at membranes and a wee bit at glands. So to begin with, there are um, four types of tissues. And our four types of tissues are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. So when you look at the tissue, first off you have epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is for a protective outer covering and it has it's for it's what forms membranes and ducts it lines the body covering sorry body cavities and hollow organs very important there are three types squamish which is flat cuboidal which is looks like cubes and columnar which looks like columns um, and they can be simple which means there's a single layer stratified which means there are many layers when you look at them um, squamish are very flat and good for protection. These are found inside your blood vessels. Then you have cuboidal. Cuboidals are found in ducts such as your pancreatic duct and also in your kidneys. They look like cubes and are very square. Columnar are long and tall. Some of them have cilia on the end and these are found in your uterine lining and in your digestive gut. Very important in your gut. Okay, there is a table here um, that pretty much gives you the scoop onto what the shapes are and where they are found. When it comes to stratified, you just need to know that stratified means there's multiple layers. You don't need to know much more detail on that. Stratified look like they, they have many layers. That's what stratified is. Okay, and then the next type of tissue we are going to look at is which one have we got muscle tissue no nope, connective tissue connective tissue basically connects and it is the supportive fabric of the body it is matrix which is sort of a substance between cells and there are physical they're categorized by physical properties they circulate they're generally connective or they're structural quite often these are in these categories but not always in circulating, you have blood, which is cells in your fluid uh, matrix. You have lymph, which is uh, basically fluid from the blood minus the blood cells, the blood elements. And then you have connective tissue. Loose connective tissue is loose and dense connective tissue is dense. So here you have your circulating blood cells, which is your cells in your liquid matrix. Then you have your loose connective tissue, which is uh, very open. And you have your adipose tissue, which is a type of tissue. Notice it is very net-like in, um, in tissue. Then you have structural tissue. You have your dense connective tissue, which looks like a lot of rope. And the rope gives it strength. Then you have your cartilage, and your cartilage has these little, they look like little eyes or fried eggs to me, inside the matrix. Then you have bone, and bone is this unique circle of tissue. It's like a bunch of little circles, kind of like straws all the way up and down. You have your um, circular uh, bone cells on the outside, and you have your channel in the inside. Bone has two different, actually two, three different types of cells. You have your osteoblasts and blasts break down bone. Then you have osteoclasts and clasts build bone. And then you have osteocytes, which are just bone cells. Okay, that's connective tissue. When it comes to muscle tissue, muscle tissue is special because it can contract and move. There are three types of muscle tissue. Skeletal, which is voluntary. You think about it, it happens. And we'll talk about striations when we look at the slides. They look, they have stripes. Then you have cardiac tissue, which is involuntary, and smooth tissue, which is in your gut, which is also involuntary. 
When you look at muscle tissue, it has to do with the location of the neurons and whether or not it has striations. Here you can see the striations go up and down this way and you have nerves on your outside. That is skeletal muscle. Then if you still have striations and you have kind of a net-like pattern, um, this is cardiac. Notice you have your nuclei kind of spread out in the net. Then you have your smooth muscle tissue. Smooth muscle tissue does not have striations and it is um, long flat uh, nuclei. So three different types and found in different area. It kind of makes sense. Skeletal muscles are your skeletal muscles which move your bones. Cardiac muscle is found in your heart and your smooth muscle tissue is found in your gut and inside um, basically any internal organs that contract. Okay, now last type of tissue is nervous tissue. There's gray matter and white matter. The gray matter is the neurons and the white matter is the neuroglia around it. The function of neuroglia is to support and protect. When it comes to neurons, I don't have a picture of the neuron. The neuron is, whoops. The neuron basically has your body and then you have the dendrites going into and the axon going away. We'll talk more about this when we talk about neurons and the nervous system. Okay, that's the different types of tissue. Then when you have thin layers of tissue working together, you have a membrane. And the purpose of membranes are to cover surfaces, to act as dividers, to line hollow cavities and body cavities, to anchor your organs, and to lubricate for ease of movement. You can have epithelial membranes or you can have connective membranes. Your, connect your epithelial membranes are the ones that line your body cavity. You have mucous membranes, which have um, line ducts and tubes, and you have your cutaneous membrane, which is your skin. Then you have your cirrhosis membrane. These ones line body cavities and cover internal cells. They are not outside, and they secrete a fluid that acts as a lubrication. You have your pleura. Your pleura cavities are inside your thoracic cavity, your outside one, your parietal is on the outside and your visceral is on your guts or your viscera. Uh, then you have the pericardium. The pericardium peri means round, cardium means heart, so it's the layer that extends around the heart. Then you have your peritoneal which lines the body cavity and covers your abdominal organs and those are mesenteries that we'll talk more about when we get to the digestive unit. Okay, then you can also have connective tissue membranes, which are the synovial membranes in your knee. You have meningitis, your men, sorry, your meninges, which are connective around your brain and spinal cord. You have your fascia, which is under your skin, and deep fascia covers and separates the skeletal muscles. Then you also have membranes that surround your organs, such as your pericardium, periosteum, and perichondrium. Notice the word peri. Peri means surrounding. There's diseases that go with them, um, inflammation, and we won't get too much into the diseases or the sickness or the tumors. Uh, words to pay attention to in this unit, you have histo. Histo has to do with tissue. Epi is on top of, as opposed to the word peri we looked at, which means around. Condo is a cartilage word. Chondrocytes are cartilage cells. Osteo is a bone word. Myo is a muscle word. Neuro is a nerve word. Neo, um, it's kind of like neonato, uh, is the new. Uh, mal is bad. Oma is a swelling or tumor. And onco is a tumor word. And that was a quick chapter four for you.